the studio again today. So I'm working on faux stained glass. I had a panel that fell out of my window. I have two windows side by side and I had one panel that came out and broke. And so I wanted to replace that instead of putting the same design on it, I'm going to replace both panels. So I have a video that shows you how to take that faux stained glass surface and design off. And now that I've done that, I'm going to try to do something on both panels that is all light colors. My husband said he'd really like to have a lot more light coming in that window. I do want that window to be covered though, without curtains, because it's one that opens on the side closest to my neighbors. So let's um, work on that today, all right? Okay, so this is a piece that I have sitting out on my table because I was working on it uh, to restore it. Uh, and as you can see, I have a really light color on the wings that has some texture. I might use this on my new faux stained glass that I'm working on for this video. I have a couple other textures that you can see um, where you put the glue down and then you daub the paintbrush in there that creates a texture. And then another one is to have, I don't know if you can see this because of the towel that's underneath of it, but you have one color of glue and water, or glue and color underneath, and then you paint it with another one, and you make sure that your brush touches in just certain spots to make some spots. So I'm not sure what I will do yet, but I'm going to create a design on two panels, and on those two panels, they're going to be side by side. And they're gonna have a lot of these lighter colors, not so much my dark, purples or blacks or greens on them. So stay tuned, we're gonna work on that. After I remove my frame, then I spray my glass with glass cleaner. I clean the front and the back and I let it totally dry before I begin the process. And so as I'm working with these pieces of glass, I have both of them side by side. What you see in the background is some stains on my old towels. In this bottle that I have right here, is black acrylic paint and I mix it with Elmer's glue all so black acrylic craft paint mixed with Elmer's glue all only and I mix it to a texture that I can write with it so how I measure that is I make sure it's good and mixed and then I just see if I can write And if it flows enough that I can write with it very well, then I am ready to go. All right, so I have taken an old piece of newsprint and I have started to create my design. I did decide that my final design is going to definitely be sunflowers. Now you see the newsprint is actually smaller than my piece of glass. I am going to do an edge and it will be around three sides of this piece. And then on the other piece, three sides on the opposite side. And so I'm just going to show you one pan how I'm doing one panel on the video. You'll see both of them in the end, but I did want to make sure you saw that. So how I create the wrought iron look that goes between the pieces of uh, stained faux stained glass is I actually mix black acrylic paint and Elmer's glue all together and I do it in a mixture that is easy to write with and you saw that just a little bit ago so now I'm ready to go and so usually I work left to right because I'm right-handed and I'll rest my hand on the glass sometimes but I'm gonna go way over here and do this top portion first before I start So get a basic line and then you can mix pieces. And what's nice about this, because it's not real lead, is if you do a drip, you just kind of wipe it away. Make sure it's all gone because it is glue. And then some of these pieces are a little bit thicker. I'm not really squeezing my bottle. I'm actually just dragging what's already there. 
You could do that with another tool, but I just do it with a bottle. There we go. All right, and see pieces like this, if you're not comfortable with it, you can come back later with a tool. Just drag a little bit of it off. I really don't care. The light's not going to shine through that part. It won't be very apparent that it's uneven. So, pardon me, I know I'm off camera just a little bit to do this side. And I'll do that last bottom stripe down at the bottom when I'm finished with my design. this set and it is dry so if you have any spots on it that you don't quite like now that it's dry you just scrape them off before they're set I'm starting to mix up my inks I'm going to put a little bit of blue in the background on the sky so I just have one drop of blue in here uh, as I said before I'm trying to make sure my my colors are all pretty light And I have one drop of green in here. I'll have some green here at the bottom, but I'll also have it throughout the center of my flowers. And then I have an ink that's called Brilliant Yellow, and I'm actually going to use three drops of that because I do want Brilliant Yellow. And you can use any kind of alcohol inks. I actually had one person tell me that they were using food coloring. Now, I don't know how food coloring works with this process. I haven't done it. You certainly could try that at home if you'd like. Okay, so let's go back to green, blue, yellow, orange. So we need an orange. And I'm going to put two drops of orange. All right, the yellow and the orange almost look the same in their bottle. And this one's called terracotta. It is an orangish brown. And I'm putting four drops in there because I do want it to, to use it as my shadow and the dark center of my, my painting. Look how cool that looks. There is a technique that you can use that will do fractals with your alcohol inks. Maybe I can do that as a video for you one of these days. It's a pretty cool process. All right, now I also have a clear glue that I'm, this is all, by the way, glue. It is literally clear school glue and alcohol inks paired together. And in this clear glue, I'm going to use it just to help blend some of these things. And then when I have some left, I have this white pearl that I'm going to add to whatever's left and do some of my outside edges with it. But I'm gonna set that aside for now because I don't wanna mix it with my other things. So, you want to prepare yourself with some, some brushes. Now, I like to use flat ones like this. If I have big spaces, you'll see me use the bigger one, medium spaces. And then if I get into some of these tiny spaces, I'll switch to the smallest one. 
and you always want to have water nearby because you're going to rinse these immediately or they will ruin your bristles. So, and I rinse them in between and keep reusing them with the different colors. So let's get started with that. <laughs>